Welcome to another section of our test project course. And in this section, we'll be talking about working with add-ons and page object model. And this is an advanced section. Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from azureautomation.com and welcome to another video of a test project course. And in this video, we'll be talking about working with add-ons. Test project add-ons are a great way to extend your existing test cases. It can extend not only just your test cases, but also it helps other project or community if your add-on is very generic and reusable across different projects. And again, whatever add-ons that you submit will not be directly submitted to the community if you want to help other people by writing your own add-ons. It will be subject to review by the test project team. So test project team will review your code and they see that it's following the guidelines of the coding standard and it doesn't really expose any malware or some security flaws or something like that. So test project teams are going to review your add-ons if you're going to submit this to community. But if you're going to submit your own custom add-ons to the test project on your own account, then there won't be review by the test project team at least, but test project by itself has their own mechanism to check if the code has any security flaws and then it will upload into the add-on option of test project and then you can start using it. So we'll see how these things works. So before that, we'll see what are the things that we need to work with add-ons. Well, we require test project Java SDK. So as you can see on the right hand side, we have a Java SDK download option that you can download from here. And we also require IntelliJ because we need to develop this particular code. Uh, in IntelliJ IDE or Eclipse IDE, whatever IDE of your choice. And then we require Java and Maven installed in your home path of your machine. So make sure you already install both of them. And then we require Windows or Mac operating system for development environment. So I use both and they work pretty much exactly the same way how it works in Windows or Mac. And then you should have a good understanding of Selenium and Appium while developing this add-ons because that's what we're going to be working with. And then you should have a good understanding of Maven because we are going to use this Maven a lot to compile our project into a jar file and upload it as an add-on to test project. So is there any sample repo that you can refer with? Well, yes, there is a great repo created by the team, which you can look from here, something like github.com slash test project Ivo slash Java hyphen SDK hyphen examples. So you can go to this link and you can see how you can work with add-ons, page object models, and runners, and things of that nature. But we are going to create our own repo. The reason is because we are going to discuss all our add-ons or page object model creation with Maven framework, which is not officially released by the test project team yet in their repo. But if you are familiar with Gradle, please clone the repo of test project GitHub repo and start working from there because Test project team has used Gradle for building the project framework, but we are going to use Maven here. It's pretty much same like Maven and Gradle. There is no difference between both of them, just that the way that you create the pawn.xml file or the Gradle file. That's the only difference here. Other than that, it's still the same Java. And one should require some of the guidelines to be followed while starting to work with add-ons. So the few guidelines that you need to follow are these. The first thing, you need to have a valid test project developer key. So as you could imagine that you are going to work with a test project add-on and then you're going to create it and you're going to upload it, you need to test the add-on in your local machine and see how it works. So for that, you need to have a developer key so that you can talk with the test project agent which is running within your own machine. And that developer key can be obtained from the test project developer option that we just saw before. So we require the developer key and then we need to also download the manifest file that you're going to create a add-on for. So as you can see on the right hand side, there is a new test add-on. So once you create that, it is going to bring you these options like upload new versions, download manifest, download proxy, delete add-ons. So you can download the manifest from the add-on there and then you can start working from here. So that's the manifest file that you're going to include within your resources folder of the test project. And then you need to also set up the Maven correctly 
to exclude the dependencies and include necessary settings. So Maven is going to be super important as you can see on the right hand side. I have just shown a very simple dependency of the jar file which is nothing but the JDK file of the test project but you also need to do so many things there so that it is going to be compiling correctly and then you're going to create a jar file to upload within the add-ons of the test project and finally you need to follow a project structure for the add-on by following some guidelines so as you can see in my case I have a maven project and it has this src main which is going to be pretty much exactly the same folder structure for a maven but also there are three different folders like add-on, resources, runner, and there is a descriptor.xml file. So these files and folders are necessary for your add-on to be tested and also being uploaded within the test project as an add-on there. So these are the guidelines that we require while building an add-on for a test project. And it's going to be pretty much the same for page update model as well, but there is few difference here and there. And yes, we are going to talk about that in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, just be informed that this is how you can work with add-ons in test project. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to IntelliJ IDE. All right, so now I'm going to open the IntelliJ IDE from my machine. All right, so now I'm in my IntelliJ IDE. And then I'm going to start creating a new project. So I'm going to choose Java here and you can see the version is 1.8. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. So you can hit next and then it's ask for the folder here. So I'm just going to give test project add on and then I'm going to hit finish. So I'm going to create a new folder here and you can see that it has created a folder structure for me this time. So you can see there is an SRC and all these things, right? And now I'm going to also add the framework here so I'm gonna add the framework support to Maven so I'm gonna choose that and then I'm gonna hit OK so that this project can become a Maven project for me and you can see that it automatically created the Maven structure like SRC main there is a Java folder and there is a resource folder right so this is the folder structure that we pretty much require for working with our add-ons so once these things are done the next thing we need to do is to download the JDK file, the developer key, and then we need to download the manifest file so that we can start working from here. So for that, I'm going to open the Chrome browser over here, and then I'm going to log into my test project account. And once you log in, you can see there is a developers option here. So you can go to this particular menu, and you can see that we have a Java, and there is a download SDK file. So you can download this SDK file from here. Once you click this, you can see it is currently downloading and I already have this particular JDK file. So I'm probably going to cancel that. And then there is this particular test project GitHub. So if you navigate to this particular URL, you can see there they have a few examples here for Android, web and iOS operating system that how you can create these add-ons as well as the page object models. So as you can go to the web here, they have the add-on runners and test. So this is something which you can use to perform the actions like creation of add-ons and then running the test and performing the test cases like how you can work with, right? So all these things are available within this particular add-on, but we are going to extract some of the essence from here and you can see how it looks like in the Gradle because we are not going to talk really about Gradle here. We are going to talk about Maven. So I'm just going to quickly show you how it looks like in the Maven world. So the framework support here is Maven. So I'm going to go to the add-ons here and you can see there is something called as build.gradle file. So within this build.gradle file, all they have is this. They have a group name as project, and there is a version and then they apply plugin as Java and they compile to this particular UTF-8 and the source code compatibility is Java 1.8 and this is the repository which is nothing but Maven and they have a configuration here for TPSDK and then they have this particular jar file where we are going to work with which is nothing but our SDK version so that they are going to extract the SDK version version from here using the test project SDK properties file and finally they have this dependency which is nothing but the SDK file which is nothing but our SDK file itself that's it so once you have everything automatically the build dot Gradle is going to compile and you can use it for publishing the add-on so they have a root name called add-on here which is going to be used for publishing it as an add-on file for you within your test project account and then you can see that they have this particular java folder they have few examples like how you can work with a clear field.java which is nothing but clearing a 
text in a particular field of the application. So all we are going to do in our example is this. I can quickly show you. So we are going to navigate to this eaapp.somi.com and then we are going to log in to the application using this option. And once we log into the application, we are then going to click all the hyperlinks of the heading. So this is kind of a very, very generic use case where all the people have seen are asking me the community questions like how we can click all the hyperlinks of a particular page. So we can achieve that at least not clicking all the hyperlinks of the page, rather clicking all the menu options of the menu bar. So these things we can do using what is called as an add-on. So you don't really have to necessarily go and click each and every link because you don't have an information of how many links you have in a menu bar. You can sequentially click all the menu options by just getting the menu bar and then getting all the hyperlinks within it and then performing a click operation on that. So this we can achieve using a very, very simple add-on of the test project. So that is exactly what we are going to do in our case here, right? So as that said, I'm going to start configuring my project right now. So the first thing is I'm going to create a folder structure here because we first require the folder structure. So for that, I'm going to create a folder structure here, something like a package, which is going to be called as add-on. And then I'm going to create one more folder here and I'm going to call this package name as runners. And then I'm going to hit OK here, right? So we don't really require this uh, Java folder, so I'm just going to delete it. And this is the folder structure we require. And then within this resource folder, we are going to add the manifest file. So this manifest file is something which is going to be available from the add-on folder. So once you go to this add-on, and then once you start creating a new add-on for your account, you are going to get this particular manifest file right so you can click this new add-ons so i'm going to call this add-on name as click menu links so this is a new custom add-on which i'm going to create myself and then i'm going to hit create once you create it you can see there is something called as download manifest file and you can see currently we don't really have any binaries attached to it and there is uh, nothing that you can do with the edit options here so i'm just going to download this particular manifest file and it will ask you what permission you require for your add-ons to work with. Because all the add-ons that you're going to execute is going to run in a sandbox environment, not directly into the test project account initially once you're going to test it. So basically you can give permissions such as file system or environment variable, something like that, which is more than enough for now. And I'm going to call this version as 1.0 and then I'm going to hit download. So you can see it has downloaded a manifest file for me. And then we are going to add this particular manifest file within our project and then we're going to start working from there. So all these things we'll be doing in our next video. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.